Today we're gonna to look at a kind of beginner concept in TypeScript, but it might be helpful for some of you who are relatively new to the language. We have a user type here, of course, right? Got three fields. We have an object literal here that matches that user type, although we're not explicitly saying that it is a user. We also have a function that takes a user and we have a function that returns a user. What I wanna show you is what happens when we change the user type, specifically what happens when we remove fields. I think what we would know is if we add a new field like age number, we would see a couple of interesting errors here. Of course, this user can't be passed to save because this object literal doesn't have age. We can also see that we can't return this user object from get user because it doesn't have age as well. That's pretty standard stuff. But what about when we remove a field from a type like user? For example, let's say we remove the password type. You might be surprised to find that we don't have any type errors in this basic code. This is a pattern that shows up a lot in TypeScript. And of course, this works in TypeScript. We can continue to pass this user object to save. TypeScript is using what a lot of people call a set theory approach to resolving your types. This user object here is in the set of all possible objects that do conform to our type. It's okay that it's more broad than this user type. It has at the very least the fields we need for this user type so we can treat it as a user object. And so what that means is, first of all, we could pass an object like this to a function that expects a user type, or we could also return an object like this from a function that is supposed to return a user type and TypeScript doesn't give us any type errors. And this can be really nice in some cases. However, in some cases, it may mean that you're passing around fields that you don't realize you're passing around and that could be bad. For example, what if this save function saved our user into some kind of document store or something like that where we don't have a schema, we pass through this object that has a plain text password and we may not realize we're doing it in TypeScript because, well, user doesn't have a password. And so now we're storing that password in plain text, maybe in a system that we didn't intend to. Or maybe get user is returning this user shape to a public facing API or to a client, something like that, some other system that shouldn't see this password field. And it's not obvious maybe from just looking at the function signature that you might actually be passing that password through. So what do we do here? Well, there's not really a way for us to say in TypeScript that this user type should have these two fields and no other fields. It's not something we can do. But what we can do is make a few small tweaks to the way we write our code so that it's more friendly to the way that TypeScript's interpreting it. What's going on here basically with both this user out here at the top level and then of course this user object here inside the function is that TypeScript infers their type when we create these objects. If I show the type hint here, you can see that this infers that this user object has username, password created at as the three fields. Same thing for this one. Once TypeScript has resolved a type for this object, we usually don't want to change it. When we return this user object here, TypeScript knows, okay, we know what the type for this user is. We figured that out when we created it. And we can see that it is broader than what we expect to return, but that's within our rules and so that's fine. What we can do is, well, first of all, we could just explicitly say, this should be a user type. Now we do get a type error. And this is kind of the error we want. When we have an object literal like this, or basically a literal value in TypeScript that we are assigning to a particular type, TypeScript is gonna make sure that it matches the type that you say it should match. And we see that object literals may only specify known properties. Password doesn't exist in that user type. And so this is the type of error that we might want to see. Of course, we could do that here inside of our get user function as well. However, another simple way you could do this is just by returning the object directly. That's not always an option, depending on you know the pattern of the code that you're writing. But this is a change that I like to use in TypeScript because I will say I certainly used this pattern in JavaScript quite a bit. It's kind of nice to create an object with a name on it and then be able to return that. And now that I write more TypeScript than plain JavaScript, I find myself returning just kind of bare objects like this more often because it gives me stronger type support when I have an explicit return type on the function. We can do the same kind of thing in passing an argument to a function as well. If I copy this particular object and paste it as an argument to our save function, you can see that we get that same error. We have password when we shouldn't, and we can go ahead and remove that. And if we remove all three of those password fields, our code is now passing. Like I said, this is not always an option that you have. You can't always just pass an object literal to your function or return an object literal from your function. However, 
when you can do those things, they're nice to do, they give you better type support. And if you can't, then it can be useful just to label that object with a type when you're creating it. I don't love to do this. I like to let TypeScript infer where I can because that just gives me a little bit more flexibility. However, I did recently run into a situation where I was trying to remove fields from an old type. And then I wanted the type checker to tell me where is it that I need to go clean up that code. And in places where I was returning that type from a function or passing that type as an object literal directly to the function, TypeScript let me know about that. Uh, but then I did have to just do some hunting and some grepping to find a few places where I was assigning to a variable and then returning, for example. So this is, again, as I said, a very basic TypeScript tip. But if you're new to TypeScript, hopefully this type of thing can help you write some cleaner TypeScript code. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.